Third word that we love. One of the words is redeem. To the to those students in the back. Uh, thank you. The the, uh, the Bible used the words redeem and it also used the words ransom. So that in the scripture. So when you think of ransom, what do you think of? Somebody being held hostage. Kidnapped. So if Jesus paid the ransom, who kidnapped us and who is he paying the ransom to? I had a discussion with Tina's co-worker. She was thinking about that. So was it the devil? Did, the, did Jesus' death on the cross, was that a ransom paid to the devil? And I, I started thinking, well, that's an interesting concept, interesting thought. Check it out. And you know, I you gotta watch words, you gotta watch the words though, you know. And so you gotta look it up in the Greek or the Hebrew. What does it really mean? And I think, you know, what was what was needed for Jesus to redeem us? What did he have to provide? Which was a what? A sacrifice. So who was the sacrifice to? Was it to God or the devil? To God, exactly. That settled that for me. The sacrifice was to God. It was to because the wages of sin is death, okay? But the free gift of God is eternal life. So we had God had to had to provide. And you know when 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 God told Isaac, God told Abraham, take your son, your only son Isaac, go up on the mountain and and sacrifice him. Imagine that. Your only son, whom I told you is going to be the, the father of many nations through. And it says, he says, he got up early in the morning, didn't tell his wife nothing, got on his horses, took his servants, got to the mountain, took the wood, took the fire, gave them to Isaac, and he told the others, he said, we're going on the mountain to worship. <coughs> With the intent of going to sacrifice his son. Now, if you go into the New Testament, it actually says, I say, let the Bible interpret the Bible. What was he thinking? Okay? And the, the New Testament tells us, it says, for he knew that if God would have made him do that, God would have raised him from the dead. Because God doesn't lie. And his, his lineage was coming through Isaac. So he was willing to do it because he trusted God that much. Now we know the story that the angel actually caught his hand and said, don't do this. God don't want you to do this. He just wants to see if you would. And then what did he, what did he see in the bushes? A ram, okay? But the scripture says God will provide himself a lamb. But that was a ram. So think about what it said right there. God will provide himself a lamb. God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world to himself. God sacrificed himself on behalf of his creation. Think of the difference between Christianity and uh and, and, and the Muslims. Allah says, sacrifice yourself for me. God, Jehovah says, I'm going to sacrifice myself for you. Pretty big difference, huh? You know, it's amazing you didn't tell his wife. Yes. Because she might have tried to talk about it. I think she would have. She would have. I think she would have been holding on to his leg all the way to the mountain. It might. Yes. Also, when, when, when Abraham was walking up to the mountain with his son. Yep. He told his servants, wait here. Me and the boy will be back. He said. Uh, and the place that he sacrificed his son was the actual spot of Mount Calvary right. where the cross was. Right. Pretty amazing. And the thing about being the redeeming of the Lord. You can stand or you can sit. <laughs> Believe in him. We should not perish but have everlasting life. And you gave your son so that we would not perish. And all who received him, you gave them us the right to become children of the living God. So we can proclaim, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That you indeed have a beautiful name, a wonderful name, and a powerful name. So Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we ask that you make your word alive to us. Let your spirit come and work within us. And speak to us what you want to speak to us today, Father. Encourage us. Speak truth to us. Give us life. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Right. There's a lot of scriptures, so I want them.
hang on to because we're going to be moving. Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30. Isaiah is written to who? Writing to who? Who? Who's he writing this to? This is not a trick question. <laughs> Who's he writing to? God's people. Exactly. Y'all scared. I think I trick y'all like that. Y'all scared the hands? So he's writing to God's people. Okay, he says this. Verse 30. What page are you on, Dana? 658. 658. He says this. Woe, talking to his children now. Woe to the rebe rebellious children, says the Lord, who take counsel, but not of me. They're taking counsel, but not from me, says the Lord. And who they devise plans, but not of my spirit. So they're getting counseled and they're making the plans, but they're not planning of the Lord. Wait, wait. Third. First one. Verse 30. The verse one. one. Verse 1. Uh -huh. yeah. Sorry. So he said, both of the rebellious children who take counsel, but not of me, who devise plan, but not of my spirit, they, that they may add sin to sin. And they go down to Egypt. Egypt is a symbol of what? The world. The world. So they go down to the world to get their, their uh, information and their plans. And they have not asked my advice, says the Lord, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a type of the world's leadership, right? And we know who the God of this world is. The God of, is a, the God of this world is the devil. Is that simple? Uh, and they trust in the shadow of Egypt. Uh, verse 5. They were all ashamed of a people who could not benefit them. Go to verse 8. Now he tells Isaiah this. Go and write it down on a table and note it on a scroll that it may be a time to come forever and ever. In other words, write it down. Okay? Write it down so you don't forget. And he says this. For this is a rebellious people. Which, what does that mean, a rebellious people? Stubborn. Stubborn, don't listen. Okay. Do it my look, way. look what he says too. They're lying children. Children who will, children who will not hear the law of the Lord. They won't hear it. They go to church every Sunday, but they don't want to hear the word of the Lord. Who, and look what they say to the seers, to the, the leaders, the ones who the prophet. Do not see. And to the prophets, do not prophesy to us right things. Speak to us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Put that in plain English. Tell us what we want to hear. Tell us what we want to hear. Sugar coated. Give us a good message. Give us something that's gonna that's gonna make us feel good. We call it the seeker friendly movement. They've done it the whole the whole. Protestant church got sucked into it about 20 years ago. You want to fill up a church fast? And you need to pre preach smooth things to people. You need to give them good things. You need to encourage them. Like they're going to an Amway meeting or something, you know? Motivation. Motivation. I'll talk about things like uh, yeah. repent. repentance and abortion and same sex marriage and sin and sexual sin. I'll talk about stuff like that. They're not coming back. Okay? Oh. Speak to a smooth thing. Get out of the way. Turn aside from the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease to be before us. In other words, let's get God out of here. Let's just do our thing. We don't need God's stuff because it gets a little intense. Amen? Verse 12. Therefore, says the Holy One of Israel. Who's speaking now? I'm in verse 12. God's speaking. Because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perversity, and rely on them. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you like a breach ready to fall, a bulge in a high wall. Was it last week we talked about the walls of Jerusalem? Was it last week or the week before? Okay, we talked about the walls of Jerusalem. When they've broken down, people, the enemy can just come right in. 
We talked about what's happening on our southern border. The enemies are, are just coming right in because the wall is broken down. He says, this, this iniquity, because you will not hear the word of the Lord, your wall is broken down and the enemy just flooding right in. I want to review now. You remember we talked about several months. If you wasn't here, there's a video that we did about the, who is the true Israel. And I'm going to do a review for you real quick. You remember, we said, God blessed Abraham and said, you will be a blessing and you, you, will, you will be blessed and then you will be a blessing. The whole earth will be blessed because of you. And you will be the father of many, many nations. Okay? And we know that that right went from Abraham to his son Isaac, the one he went up on the mountain with. And then Isaac, it went to Jacob, who took it from Esau. Because Esau was a plug and wanted to eat soup rather than get a blessing from God. So it went from Abraham, Isaac, to Jacob, who, who wrestled with God and became Israel, the prince with God. And Israel had how many sons? Twelve. Twelve. And we, we learned that the birthright son was Joseph the J, Joseph the H, Joseph. Okay? And we know what happened. We know what happened. That okay, we, first of all, Joseph went to Egypt, got sold by his brothers. He's a picture of Christ. Okay? He redeemed his whole family after going through prison. So Joseph is in Egypt, and that's how all the Israelites got to Egypt. Yeah, that's all they got because he, he had food, the only one in the world that had food. And there he had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. And right before Israel died, Joseph brings his two sons and he says, Bless them, Father. I want you to personally bless them. Now Joseph has the birthright. He, he could have done it, but he wanted his father to do it. Okay? And we, 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 we remember what happened. He took, changed his hands. And he said, no, Father, you're doing it wrong. This is my oldest son right here. And he said, I know what I'm doing, son. He will be many nations, but he will be a single nation even greater than him. So we know that the birthright went from Abraham to Isaac to Joseph, to, I'm sorry, to Israel, then to Joseph, and then Ephraim and Manasseh. Then we learned that Israel, the nation of Israel was split up into two. Remember, we had the map. The ten tribes, ten sons of Israel, and the two sons, including Judah, where the Jews are. And Syria, because these people rebelled against God, that's who Isaiah is talking to. Okay? And because of their rebellion, God sends the Syrians and takes them out of the land. That's, that's, the, that's the last penalty. You will be losing your land. And he took them to the north. Okay? And Joseph and Ephraim and Manasseh is there. They are the birthright one. They are going to be the ones that's going to bless the world. Remember that? So they are taken, and we know if you look at the research, they went all over into Europe, and they never went back. So they've been all over the world. You remember we read it says they will be scattered all over the world. I told you all what I believe. I firmly believe that that Ephraim was Great Britain because he said you will be many nations and you will bless the world. Give us this. Give us the Bible. Okay? But your younger brother would be greater than them. America. One nation under God that has literally fed the world, clothed the world, goes to the, de goes to the defense of the world. Okay? So look, 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 look what happened. In 1732, the ten northern tribes of Israel refused to repent after they were struck by the Assyrians. Where's the Assyrians from? Syria. Where's Syria? North of Israel. The Middle East, right? Okay, we hear about them a lot, and all of this conflict that's about to come down right now, which was a warning from the Lord. So they got, they got taken by. So now they're living with it. Instead of listening to the alarm of turning back and humbling themselves in repentance, they both of, the, of their of their resolve. Turn to Isaiah nine. Page 638. Page 38 in the rule book. Verse 9. Everybody say verse 8. Isaiah 9. Verse 8. The Lord, who, 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 who sent in the word? The Lord. the Lord sent a word against Jacob. Who's Jacob? Israel, his people. 
God sending a word, oh, God don't do that. Yes, God does. God corrects his children, just like we should. Amen? God doesn't raise bastards. God sent a word against Jacob, and it has fallen on Israel. And all the people will know Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria. Okay, I want you to stop for that. I want you to go to verse 10. The bricks have fallen down. We will rebuild with huge stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. This is what they said. God allowed the Syrians to come in and attack Israel back in 732 B.C. Okay? And they came in, God allowed it, God put the wall down, and they got attacked. And, the, and after they attacked, this is what they said. The bricks have fallen down, but we're going to rebuild with huge stones. Yeah, they knocked down bricks, but we're going to put rocks. The sycamores have been cut down, but we're going to plant stronger trees. We're going to plant, we're going to replace them with cedars. You see that? Sounds good, right? Except, look at verse, the, look at verse 9b. They saying this, not what? Not, well, verse 9, but the second part of 9. All the people will know, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Syria, who say in pride and arrogance of heart. They were acting in pride and arrogance. Oh yeah, we got attacked. Well, we're going to build back stronger than ever. Build back better. Build back better. Yeah, yeah we're going to build back better. And we don't need God to do that. We're going to build, we're going to do it. We're going to build back better. Fast forward, the same exact thing happened in America. Exact. It was called 9-11. Anybody remember 9-11? Who came in? The Middle East came in and destroyed the World Trade Center. You remember that? I want you to think about this. i never forget when it happened. It was a shooting me, I think. And Bettina texted me out. I was at Catalina School. I remember when the trade set was fall. The terrorists are attacking America. And I automatically knew, because I had written a book probably 15 years before that called America Awaiting the Bird, based on Deuteronomy 28. We may look at that if we have time. It says, If you will follow the Lord and all his commands, I will bless you above all the nations of the earth. But if you don't, then the curses will become upon you. Just reaping what you sow, right? Amen. If you plant good things, you're going to grow good things. If you plant poisonous seed, guess what's coming? If you plant wheat, you're going to get bread. If you plant darnel, you're going to get poison. Okay? I remember, I remember that, that, that Sunday morning. I wanted to hear what preachers were saying because I knew in my heart what it was. I knew it was the judgment of God. And I went to around to a couple churches and I listened to them. And there were so many mixed messages. Because we didn't want to, ah, we don't want to say this is God's judgment. You know, that's not a, not a happy topic. People don't like to say that. It, to me, it was odd. I'll never forget. I waited on David Wilkerson to hear what David Wilkerson created. The, the, the book was written about him, The Cross and the Switchblade, created Teen Challenge, moved from, from Texas to, to, to New York. To, that they started in New York and, and, and to this day they have Times Square Church that have millions of people all over the world that come and he preaches the message. And I used to get I used to get his newsletter. It comes every three, he's passed away. Come every three weeks. And I remember I want to hear what David Wilkerson said. I knew he was gonna have the word of the law. And he preached he preached out a message, and you can find it online. And this was the title of the message. The towers have fallen. And we missed the message. I read it last night by 2 o'clock in the morning. The towers have fallen and we missed the message. And I said, that's exactly right. Because you remember they had started having the bubble stickers on the trucks. The power of pride. Right after that, the power of pride. You remember all of our legislators got together, the ones that hate God and who God got together and singing. God bless America on the steps and all this stuff. You see what happens when judgment comes. Everybody prays. 
that it don't last long. Okay? And I think that because of pride, they came out and they basically said this. So, I, so the first sign that equates these two things was the breach. God pulled down the wall in, in Israel and the Syrians come in. God pulled down the wall in America and all of a sudden America's attacked. The trade centers, the Pentagon is attacked. Never before, I don't know if you remember that day, there was a, there was a people were, I saw me and Tina watch a special the other day about all oh, the, when that, when that thing crashed, that, that smoke went for miles. People were just running out of smoke. They couldn't even see. It was like hell on earth. Okay? So the first thing that happened was the breach. God pulled down the wall. The second thing is, who did it? In the Bible, it calls them terrorists. The terrorists of Syria did this to Israel. Well, who did it to America? We know it was the terrorists. That's the first time you've ever heard this word, terrorists. What do terrorists do? They cause terror. They will make you fear. And if you don't remember that, it's sad because I taught a class last year in high school. Those kids don't even hardly remember. They, don't even, they remember it. It wasn't here. So they don't really know about it. They don't know what it was like. Okay? There's a song that says, where were you when the world stopped turning? You know, we think when America stops to America, the world stops turning. It don't stop turning. It stops for us for a little while. But that's how we think, right? So the second thing that happened was the terrorists. The third thing that happened was, what did they say? Quoting Isaiah 9, 10. This is what they said. The bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will replant with cedars. Okay? So that's what Israel was doing. We're bringing in stones in here. We're going to build back on stone. So the third sign. First sign was the breach fell. The second sign was the terrorists. They were done by terror. The third sign was the bricks have fallen. Yes, sir. The, the, the buildings haven't been completely built in New York. Some of the buildings that were torn on, they haven't been replaced no, yet. Tina and I saw it. It's hard to imagine what that was like. So the fourth thing they say is, we will rebuild stronger than ever. What did America say? We will rebuild stronger than ever. ever. And we rebuild it. And it's called the Freedom Tower. It's there. They rebuilt it top taller than the first one. What did they build on? What did Israel say? We're going to build with a stone. Not building with bricks no more. What did we do in America? We went into the mountains of New York and they pulled out a stone to bring it to New York and set it down and said, we will rebuild on this stone, the Freedom Stone. Exactly. And it happened in Israel. Oh, the fourth sign. The fifth sign. The sixth sign says, the sycamore has fallen, but we will plant seeds instead. There was a beam that fell off of the top of one of the World Trade Centers. And there's a little church that sits on the corner called St. Paul's Cathedral. And that, 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 that beam came down and it crushed that sycamore tree, but it spared that church. The church that the first government of America knelt down in to pray and dedicate America to, to the Lord. So what did they do? The tree was dead. They replanted the tree. The tree of hope. Guess what it was? A cedar. If you look at the Bible, it says a conifer. You know what happened to the tree of hope? It died. The tree of hope died. In 2003, it was planted. I don't know when it died. So now leads the utterance, the words that were spoken. The very next day, 9-11, was 9-12. Tom Dasher, the head of the Senate, walks into the Senate, and everybody is in shock. And what does he say? He opens the Bible. Where does he open to? Isaiah, Isaiah 9. But verse does he open to? Verse 10. He didn't, he didn't read verse 9. He started in verse 10. And what does he say? The bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild 
with huge stone. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will plant cedars. What he forgot to read was, we are speaking in pride and arrogance of heart. He was praying a curse on the nation, and everybody was <laughs> clapping. Preaching a curse on the whole chapter is a curse on Israel, and he's preaching it, okay? I remember going to a men's retreat in Brook Hill, Arkansas. Right that, that same year. It was uh, we used to we used to go every year, like hundreds of men over there in St. Ox Springs. And we get over there, and the guy who headed up, he was the pastor of the church there, Tim, Tim Brooks. And the whole weekend dealt around warfare, and he gets up there on a Saturday morning. And he said, George Bush got up there with his microphone, and he said, we're going to find these terrorists. They killed 3,000 Americans. We're going to smoke them out. We're going to smoke them out, and we're going to get them. And they started playing a patriotic song. And I want to tell you something. My spirit was so grieved. Because what were we doing? We were doing the same thing that they're doing right here. Oh yeah, God, you knocked our stuff down? We're going to smoke them out. We're going to get them. We're going to find those people that killed 3,000 Americans. We walked out of that building, your dad was with us. Your dad was with us. We walked out of that building, and I was grieved bad. Everybody knew it. They're like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? I said, I made my stomach sick. What you mean? I said, what I mean? I said, George Bush has got a, uh, George W. Bush got a megaphone saying 3,000 Americans were killed and he's going to smoke them out and go kill them. I said, you know how many aborted babies died yesterday? About 5,000. I said, is he smoking them out? Is he smoking them abortions out? Abortionists? He ain't smoking none of that out of them. I said, that's... When you do something and then you point the finger, it says in uh, Romans, Romans 2, okay? You smoke them out? <laughs> Look what it says right here. So Tom Joshua, the Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Tom Joshua has spoke uh, the day after 9-11 and, 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 and read uh, Isaiah 9 10. Well, three years later, 2004, we have a presidential election. John Edwards, remember John Edwards? He had a baby, uh, a baby with his secretary, right, running for president. He's speaking before the Black Caucus prayer breakfast. Okay, why well, he's got a secretary on the side. And he says, it was it was uh, 9 11 uh, anniversary. And what does he do? He opens up. To, to Isaiah 9 10. And he says, The bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will replant seeds. Twice they, they confirmed the message that we were speaking out in pride and arrogance of heart as a nation. We will not, we will not repent. We're going to smoke them out. This is what happened in Israel. After that, after that happened. What did Israel do? Did they repent? No. They did not repent. Nineteen years later, God sent a plague on the land of Israel. When did 9-11 happen? 2001. What is 19 years later? 2020. COVID-19 hits America. Didn't even call 19. Exactly one year later, September 11. And what happened a year after that? Where did we just run from? Afghanistan. Who did we leave it to? The terrorists that bombed us in the first place. And we left them with our military equipment. We left people behind. We left our friends behind. And we left Afghanistan to the terrorists that bombed us in the first place. And now experts are saying they're going to be stronger than ever and we're in more danger than ever. Pretty amazing, huh? Go to, Deuter De Go to Deuteronomy 28. <coughs> Way in the front. Second book. Third book. Second book. Third book. Fifth book. 
<laughs> Which one, Dana? Four. And it says after Genesis. It's after Genesis. Or Revelation. Or Psalms. Deuteronomy 28. You know, I, like I told y'all, I was I was really sitting there yesterday afternoon. I was sitting there yesterday afternoon and I was trying to find a good little message that would encourage us. And the Lord said, the Lord gave me that scripture. So not try to find smooth things to tell me. You know what I'm putting on your heart, you just tell the people. Then I can what not invite the like it. Good on 28. You know what Ezekiel called prophets who told people what they wanted to hear? He called them pillow prophets. Because you could put up a pillow and you could relax while the prophet. When Jeremiah would walk in to, to tell the king of Israel what was going on, the other prophets would walk in and say, Why don't you just shut up? All you got is bad to say, man. And he came in, remember I think oh, he came in with the with the ox uh, oxen uh, the yoke. Like this is what's gonna happen to our nation. And the false prophet cut it off. Like, yeah, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say same same thing. Plus, we're gonna set ourselves free. Came back the next day, he had an iron yoke. Cut this one off. And sure enough, it happened just like I said it was. Deuteronomy 28. See, the Lord had given me this years and years and years before this ever happened. And it says this. This was the book that I wrote called America Awaiting the Verdict. It was based on this chapter. We have 28. It says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, Observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today. God will set you high above the nations of the earth. Did God do that to Israel? Back in that day when David, when David was there? Did God set him high above the nations of the earth? Yes. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Did God do that to America? Yes. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. It's like a wave. The blessings are just going to overtake you. Because you obey the voice of the Lord. One nation under God. In God we trust. All our laws are based on the Ten Commandments. Okay? Then look what he says in verse 3. Blessed be you in the blessed shall be you in the city. Blessed shall be you in the country. In town, out of town. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, the offspring of your flock. You're gonna have you're gonna be rolling in it like for a farmer to be just Look at verse 5. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. That means uh, when you go to the grocery store, you're going to have a basket full of stuff. Are we blessed like that in this country? Yes. Shoot, you ever been to a third world country and see where those people live compared to us? We got 27 different kinds of oatmeal. They're just looking for some cornmeal. Blessed shall be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. You're going to be blessed coming in, blessed going out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you and you one way and they shall flee seven ways. How many wars did we win? We won every war we was in. Up until Vietnam. That's when God was dead. You remember the magazine? God is dead. Oh, God is dead? Uh, you know, like God's kicked out of school. Oh, yeah. God's kicked out of government. Oh, yeah? Well, how about you go at it on your own? Look at verse 8. The Lord will command the blessings on you in your storehouses and all in which you set your hand, and He will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. Christopher Columbus, when he came to America, he said, The Lord said this in my mind, that I would sail to this place to find a land that God was leading to me. Christopher Columbus. What did they just do to the statue? Tore them down and, and busted it up. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to Himself. Just as he was sworn to you, you will, if you keep the commandment of the Lord. Whether it was right or not, America was known as a Christian nation. Tell about Supreme Court Justice John Jay said, America is a Christian nation. That all the, that, watch this, that all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they're going to be afraid of you. That's happened, y'all. We were like, Uncle Sam walks around with a big what? A big stick. That was a cartoon, you know, a political cartoon. She spoke softly and he carried a big stick. Get out of the way. What happened when World War II? We weren't getting involved. We we're going to let them have it out. Then, then Pearl Harbor. And what did, they, what did the Japanese say? I think we've awakened up. She's a giant. 
And we know the end of that story. Us going into the world changed everything. Into that war. People will be afraid of you. And all and the law will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, in the produce of your ground, in the land which is swore to you. The Lord will open, I mean verse 12, to you good treasure, the heavens to give to the, you rain in the land in the season, and to bless all the work of your hand. What is going to bless? Everything. You're just going to be blessed. What? America is 200 years old, and you start, you, you name one invention, from the cotton gin to electricity to you. Where it all came from? Everyone came out of America. Everyone. Is that not that crazy? The youngest nation in the world is inventing everything. Why? Because God blessed everything. Look at this in verse uh, the end of 12. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. borrow. Why? Because Proverbs tells us the borrower is a slave to the lender. Okay? So he says you're going to be a lender. You're not going to borrow. You're going to give people money. You will be the head and not the tail. You will be above only and not beneath. If, see that word if? It's a big word. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you to this day, and be careful to observe them. Have we? So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. You will have this blessing upon you as long as you follow me and you don't start following other gods. Or look at one more scripture, verse 15. But, if I say but, but, but it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God and observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which I command you today. All these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Like the blessings overtake will overtake you like a wave. These curses will overtake you. And I want to tell you something. It goes from verse 16 all the way to verse to the end of the chapter. Look at verse 43. I'm just looking at one. You can pick one on. He basically said everything you do is going to be a disaster. Look at verse 43. My eyes just fell on 43. The alien who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. God's word is amazing. Aliens right now, illegal aliens have more rights in America than we do. Look what he said right here. He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. Who lends to us? China. China. Like Bush would say. China. Not Bush. Trump. <laughs> and so because we borrow for them, who's a slave? We're a slave to China. Look, he shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. Moreover, these curses, you, you need to read that one day. And you can, and, 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 and you can see every, and my, my book was this. I basically went through every one of those blessings and showed that America was blessed above every nation in the history of the world, in every single area. Agriculturally, economically, militarily, educationally, we had the best education system in the world, the best military in the world, the best economy in the world, the best everything in the world, the youngest nation. And now, what do we have? We have $30 trillion of debt. We're no longer a borrower. We're no longer a lender. We're a borrower. We're the greatest borrowing nation in the world. Now they're trying to create a $1 trillion coin to throw in the treasury so that they can spend it. Okay? So people don't understand. They're giving a stimulus check. A friend of mine just told me this. He's working on the farm. All of his farm workers who come from Costa Rica and all these nations, he looked at them one day, they're all coming in, they all got a stimulus check. They all got a stimulus check. We are $30 trillion in debt, and we are paying foreign people who are Mexican residents <coughs> stimulus checks in America. My dad used to say, you don't have a pot to in, and you give it. It's like, how stupid are you? 
but that's what that's what we're doing. We borrow from China to give to exactly. Nation. We're borrowing go further in debt so we can give nations that hate us. Nations that hate us. Now these terrorists that are in Afghanistan. Now we got the Taliban. ISIS K has gone to meet them. They're on the borderline with Pakistan, who is controlling everything. Pakistan has 100 nuclear weapons, and also Iran is getting in on the deal. You look at the occupancy of the White House. You look at the occupancy of the White House. And you have to realize, he is a curse on America. He's what we deserve as a nation. We, we're, we're reaping what we sow. Amen. Yeah, Deuteronomy 28. Let's go to uh, Hosea 4. A couple more scriptures. Hosea is Hosea right before the New Testament. Well, no, maybe not. God made Hosea marry a prostitute. Can you imagine that? He's a prophet. And God said, go marry this prostitute. Yeah, and my, back in those days, you had to go, you had to go, they, they, they used to sell the prostitutes. So he, you had to go and redeem them. You had to go buy them. Okay? So he went and he bought her. Okay? Took her as his wife. Had children with her. And what did she do? She went back on the street. And Hosea found out about it. She's back on the street. Hosea 8.37. There's a uh, right after Daniel. Right before Amos. Remember, all these prophets are prophets to Israel and not to Judah. Remember I tell you all that the Jews of Judah and their prophets were like Jeremiah. These prophets, Hosea and these guys, Amos and those guys, when you start reading them, you look at them with different eyes. Remember, I tell you, everybody looks at the, all the words to Israel and they're looking at the little land in the Middle East. We know that that's not Israel. That's not Israel. It's scattered all over the world, I believe, in Britain and America. So see if it doesn't fit exactly. So look at this in uh, Hosea. So, like I said, Hosea, God made Hosea marry a prostitute, marry her, had children. Okay, trying to, what's the word I'm looking for? This in uh, Hosea. So like I said, Hosea, God made Hosea marry prostitute, marry her and children. Okay, trying to, what's the word I'm looking for? Straighten their arms, yeah. help her out, put her straight, clean her up. Huh? Clean her up. Clean her up. What does she do? She goes back on the street. <coughs> he finds out she's been back on the street. She's been bought and sold. She's back. She's back on the on the on the stage, being being sold as a slave. What does God tell him to do? Go buy her again. Do you think that was a little bit humiliating? And he's like, well, God, why are you making me do this? He said, because that's how I feel. That's how I feel about my people. They're a bunch of prostitutes. I gave them everything. I gave them everything. I gave them, I made them the greatest nations in the world. And what did they do? They became prostitutes. And went with other false gods and prostitutes themselves. Hosea, chapter 4. In day 38 in the blue book. All right, here we go. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. For the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying, killing and stealing, and committing adultery, with bloodshed upon bloodshed. It's not every one of those things is a perfect picture of where we are today. You turn on the news. Dealing, killing. They probably, I'm sure they killed 50 in Chicago. Just Chicago this weekend. And they freed us to you. 
Huh? They're free to steal. Yes. If it's not over a thousand, they won't even get in California. Exactly. They don't even know. They're watching them steal. They're watching them steal. They're watching them smoke crack. They're watching them, they're watching them do all of this. But do not go to a school board meeting and say that you got a problem with your child, children being taught. The FBI will be at your house. How insane, y'all. Who would have ever believe? Who would have ever believe it would have happened in America? This North Korean woman who grew up in North Korea, who is now in America, she says it's worse now. What she sees happening now, she says it's worse and more deceptive than what she witnessed in North Korea. And she's trying to warn people. Look what it says. Therefore, the land will mourn. Everyone who dwells there will waste away with the beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea will be taken away. What's happening right now with our economy? Going down the tube. Going down the tube. We got ships sitting in the in the ocean causing oil field all leaks because they can't come in because there's nowhere for them to go because there's nobody to work. The truckers can't truckers like we never seen anything like this before. There's no goods. There's nobody to, to the lumber prices are going through the roof because they can't find no workers. And the government's facilitating the whole yeah. mismatch of debauchery. Amen. Try to take a little money out of the bank. Yeah. <laughs> Try to take a little money out of the bank. You're trying to make it to where? Six hundred dollars yeah, right. will flag you. In or out. In or out. Alright. But I'll tell you, you go to the bank. And then for $10,000, they'll tell you to come back in a few days. That's all money. Scary. Look at this. Now let no man contend or rebuke another, for your people are like those who contend with the priest. Therefore you shall stumble in the day. The prophet shall also stumble with you in the night. And I will destroy your mother with the land. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What kind of knowledge? The knowledge of the Lord. The knowledge of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear God, you don't even have the beginning of wisdom. So we got these people who think they're smart running this country that do not fear God. There's no way they fear God because they their actions prove that they don't. I'm going to tell you right now, my brother-in-law sent me a thing yesterday saying the Republicans are probably going to take over the House and the Senate. You know what I said? whoop de do Because they're spineless cowards. Yes. Just like the Republicans in Louisiana. They're spineless cowards. Mm -hmm. They do nothing but get a paycheck <coughs> and then get more rich when they leave office. There's a few exceptions to that rule. Not many. Not many. You're right. Because, and why? Because you're rejected knowledge. I will reject you from bringing a priest for me. Because remember this, God always wanted Israel to be a nation of priests. Okay? You will be a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. To show forth the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. That's in the book of Genesis or one of the five first books of the Bible. And then we see it repeated in Peter when Peter talks to us. And he says, oh, by the way, you are that holy priesthood. You are a royal people. You are a holy nation called out by God into his marvelous life. We are a priest. And this is what a priest does. A priest offers sacrifices to God. That's why when we pray, we say, oh, God, I'm trying to pray for this nation. Look at it. First of all, I, like Daniel, oh, for, Lord, forgive us for allowing these babies to be murdered every day. We don't say nothing. We need to start with us first. We allow it to happen every day. We let, we let our nation be changed. We let men marry men and women marry women and now probably dogs and cats. But where does it end? Once you, see, once you get off the slippery slope of truth, you get into the nightmare of total deception to the point where you will believe the lie, the ultimate lie, which is where we headed. Look at verse... Uh, Oh, look, look at this, y'all. I will reject you from being a priest for me because you have forgotten the law of your God. In verse. I, I'm in verse, verse the end of 6. I will also forget your children. children. 
Y'all, all children. Oh, yeah, bad way. They just had a thing on, they just had a com thing in Congress with Facebook, Facebook, uh, really Facebook, where they are, the whistleblower, they are admitting that Facebook knows that young adolescent girls especially are committing suicide in unbelievable numbers because of this. Okay? Facebook. Because of bullying and, and all it's psychologically they know this the data that data showed them this. You know what they did? We don't care. We make us money. A lot of money. I don't care if the little girls are dying. These people are evil though. These people are evil. And they will they will they, the Bible says that in the end day they will say that good is evil and evil is good. Anybody who speaks truth what happens to them on these on these media sites. You're canceled. Canceled out. Yes, sir. I think, you know, that the whistleblower on Facebook, you know, it, it's a deception. She's trying to get all the good people to She's get a plant. She's a plant. And just let the bad people stay on. She's a plant. Made it look like, oh, yeah, they can whistleblow on Facebook. It's all a plant. These people are conniving, man. They are so conniving. Here we go. Look at verse 7. The more they increase, the more they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. I will change their glory into shame. Think about the, the, the glory of America. Back in the days, in the 50s then. Right? Best days. Right. Huh? Those were the best. The days. No, it's true. 50s. And now, the shame. Look at, look at what the world thinks about us now, what just happened in Afghanistan. Who can trust America? Can't trust the guy. They tell you one thing and they lie about it. They lie about it. They lied about Afghanistan up and down. They lied about COVID. They lied about we will not mandate the, the shot. We will not make anybody do it. And then three weeks later they mandate. They lie. They're just bald faced lie. They won't think twice about it. Look at this. They eat up the sin of my people. They, I'm in verse 8. They set their heart on them, their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. So I will punish them for their ways. M many of the religious leaders are just like them. We're going to preach good things. We're going to pack the house. We're not going to get people riled up. Look at verse, and their reward and reward them for their deeds. You will reap what you sow. Amen. For they shall not eat, but they, for they shall eat, but they do not have enough. I know a lot of people have started stacking up food, you know. You know, buying rations and stuff. Uh, you pray about it. They shall commit harlotry, but not increase, because they have ceased from obeying the Lord. Look at verse 16. For Israel is stubborn, like a stubborn calf. Now the Lord will let them forage. What did y'all somebody's Bible say? Somebody read me 16. Like a stubborn heifer, Israel is stubborn. And the Lord now feed them like a lamb in a broad pasture. Read your day. For Israel is as obstinate as a stubborn cow, and the Lord now Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. He made the bed. Let him sleep in. Let us sleep in it. Let their drink is rebellion. They drink rebellion. They're, they commit harlotry continually. Now remember, we're not talking about sexual harlotry. He's talking about a national harlotry. Okay? Her rulers dearly love dishonor. Wow. Her rulers dearly love dishonor. What did y'all say? The end of 18. Say again. Love shame more than honor. They love shame more than honor. They love shame more than honor. They love shame more than honor. 
Y'all, look at what they're doing in Washington, and you have to say they love shame more than honor. They make no right decision on anything, nothing. Everything is wrong. They love shame more than honor. The Word of God is so incredibly true. And people are so incredibly the same. Where are we? What verse are we on? 19. 19. The wind has wrapped her up in his wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. I want you to that's, I want to look at something real, real sick. In verse 6. You know, he goes on to, to continue, continue on. When you read these prophetic books in Hosea and Amos and them, look in the mirror. Don't look and say just what they did back then. Look in the mirror. When I say the mirror, I mean us as a nation. Because once again, we are the people of God because look at this. Come and let us return. So the prophet is still saying, in, in all of this, he says, come and let us return to the Lord. Right now, we have a movement in, in uh, uh, America in in, in California, they're baptizing thousands in the ocean. We got a movement. People are saying, come and let us return to the Lord. But if you're not preaching this truth, you can't be preaching, oh, everything is hunky-dory. God wants to bless you and give you a Cadillac on Sunday morning and expect people to change. You got to tell, show the people their sin. You got to say, look at where we are. Come and let us return to the Lord. For He, for he has torn, but He will heal us. He has stricken but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. Think about that. Jesus rose on the third day. After two days, there's many, many references to two days and third, the third day. He will raise us up. See, God is always in the business of who we sung. I am redeemed. God's always in the redeeming business. It's never too late for anybody. Right? So anybody has the opportunity to come back to the Lord, return to the Lord. Yeah, he's told us, but he will heal us. Look at this. That we may live in His sight. Let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. Let's finish it this, y'all. Let's go to Isaiah 59. Last, last time. Isaiah 59. Page 689. Verse 58. My friend David Wilkerson, I never met him, but you know, I've read so much. I've uh, read it so much. I, I can hear the man. He would so many times, uh, his newsletter. I remember I was going through something with the church, and uh, uh, I was called a troublemaker because I was questioning some things, paying questions, and I was like, he's a troublemaker. And I, I have. Uh, and his newsletter came in, and when I opened it, the title of it, you can find this online, it says, We need more troublemakers in the church. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Look at verse 58. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell, what are we supposed to be doing? Especially leaders. Not everybody is called to this, okay? But leaders, tell my people their transgressions. Don't sugarcoat them. Tell my pre preachers out there, if you're not doing this, you're not, for, you're not fulfilling your call. You're being a pillow prophet. Tell my people their, tr their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Go to, verse 50, go to chapter 59. This is the bottom line, y'all. Behold, after all of this bad, gloomy, gloomy picture. Because it is gloomy. gloomy for the whole world. Right? We're in the end days, the Bible tells us that. There's going to be a time like never before. If we're getting close, then we're going to see that. Behold, the Lord's hand is not sharp, that, he, that it cannot save. God's arm, is, God's arm is not short. He can always save you if you drown. Amen? Amen? He has a long arm. Okay? 
It goes for anybody. Nor is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. You don't got to yell at the top of your lungs loud to, uh, for God to hear you. Remember, the, remember the, the publican that was in the temple wouldn't even pray, wouldn't even lift up his head and say, Lord, say, Lord, forgive me a sinner. Jesus said, that man right there, he went away from him. Amen. Amen. Because God's hand is not short that he cannot save. His ear is not heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from God. And your sins has hidden his face from you. So that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood. And your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. Again, he's talking about a nation. Look what he says in verse 4. No one calls for justice. No one pleads for truth. But there are people calling for, for, for truth. Right? He's doing it right now. That's what we're doing right now. We're calling for truth. We want justice. And justice, for, for the Lord loves justice. And he forsakes not his sake. But when judgment comes in, what happens? When the law, when, when someone does evil and a judge or a police officer comes in with justice, what does it look like? It looks like a stick. Or it might even look like a gun, right? That's justice. It says the Lord loves justice. Think about how this, what we're doing in this nation is defund the police and letting people steal in front of them is a total, just a total debauchery of truth and what's right. No one's calling for justice. No one's pleading for truth. They trust in empty words and they speak lies. They can see evil and bring forth iniquity. They breed in evil. They had viper's eggs. Little snake aid, right? They hatch in them. And these vipers are breaking out. Look at verse 7. Their feet run to evil. They ain't walking to evil. They're running to do evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. They make haste to shed innocent blood. These congressional women that are, they are so angry that Texas would, would try to stop the murder of a baby. I dare you to try to stop the murder of these babies. It's, did you know that it's God's will abortion? They said? Wow. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their path. The way of peace they have not known, and there is no justice in their ways. They have made themselves crooked paths. Whoever takes the way that way shall not know peace. Therefore, justice is far from us. We look for the light, but we find darkness. I'm in verse 9. We look for brightness, but we walk in blindness. We go for a wall like a blind man. That's the picture of our nation. We're looking for the wall like a blind man. That's what you call like lost like a goose in the fall. And there you said it. Remember that? Lost like a goose in the fall. That's where we are. We grow as look, we grow as if we have no eyes. We stumble at noonday. We growl like bears. We moan like doves. Verse 12. For our transgressions are multiplied before God. Verse 13. In transgression and lying against the Lord. Verse 14. Justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off. For look at this, y'all. Read underline this scripture. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Truth is fallen in the street. And look at this one. And he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Somebody read that, verse 15 in their Bible. Devin? 15. 15. Truth is missing, and whoever turns to evil is plundered. As good as become evil. And the innocent get targeted, just like what's happening. Go to chapter 60. And all of this gloominess and blackness and blindness of the world, the Bible speaks to us now and it says this in chapter 60. Arise, shine. I might do like that when you wake up in the morning. Give me that. You do Arise, shine. For the light has come. You see that? For I shine, for your light has come. Who's our light? Jesus. Jesus has come to us. Where is he? He's inside of us. Okay? He's given us his word. He's showing us right now what's happening. And he's telling us to arise and shine. 
How are you going to shine? You know, that, that scripture about uh, people say it all the time, and it's not right. Uh, God's the sun and we the moon. No, that, that's not right. What? God's the sun, like the sun, yeah. and we, because he, he's the light, okay? Right. He is the sun, right? He's the light of the universe. And we're the moon, because the moon has no light of its own. It simply reflects the, the light. But that ain't true. Jesus said, let your light shine before men. He said, he didn't say, let my reflection. He said, let your light. Jesus said, know you not that you are the light of the world? We're not the moon. We're the suns. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Spirit of God is rising in us. Amen? For behold, look at this. This is where we are. For behold, look around. The darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. Look around you. Deep darkness, and we're not talking about daylight darkness. We're talking about spiritual darkness. is covering the people. Y'all, people are lost out there, man. Okay? Deep darkness is, coming, is covering the people. But the Lord will rise over you, and His glory will be seen upon you. Let me tell you something. When it's dark outside, when a hurricane comes and every light's off, the whole town's off, like you all is one, and night falls. I mean, we've all experienced that, right? With a hurricane. And there's no, there's no stars, it's cloudy, it's dark. You got one little light, man, it's like, man, let me share that little light with you. A candle. A candle becomes, you know. And man, if you got a generator with a light on, my God, you got that. You're living in a castle, right? Light, when you're in darkness, light is, is comforting, isn't it? Jesus, I mean, God said this, His glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles, those that don't know God, will come to your light. And the king through the brightness of your eyes. So God, this is a prophetic word. It says that in the end times, when a gross darkness will cover the earth and the people rise and shine because the light, God, we're the answer. We are the answer. We've been looking for the answer, and the answer is us. It's like that song that says, you know, I see what's happening in the world, and I see what's happening, and I say, God, why don't you do something? And he said, I did. I made you. Arise and shine. Get ready. Let the light shine. Okay? You can't, he's not calling you to do anything that you can't do. He's not, he's not, he's giving you gifts. Use those gifts and he's going to use them. Okay? We all got different callings. Just use what he's called you to do. But we need to, we, we need to understand what we just, we need to understand what we just read and the situation we're in. But we don't. We can't let it get us down because we know that we know the end of the book. We know the answer. Amen. God wins. Okay. And because God wins, we win because we are co-heirs and co-redemption, co-redeem, co not redeemers, co-heirs with Him. We're going to inherit the kingdom of God. Let's finish right here. So Gentiles will come to your light and kings to your brightness of your eyes. Lift up your eyes around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son, why are they coming to us? Because we got the light. And your sons and your daughter, that's the scripture right there. For your children, call on that. Hold on to that. Then, then you shall see and become radiant. When we start seeing what's happening, it says we're going to become radiant. You know, how, how joyful when you see people are going to start turning to the Lord. Okay? And your heart's going to swell with joy because the abundance of the sheep shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The wealth of the Gentiles is stored up for the just. Yes. All right? Yes. It's a, it's a good scripture, huh? I claim that. The, you know, me and Tim talked about the other day. Go to California and they got these. You, to buy a house, you have to spend six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars to buy a shack. Not a shack, but a these people live on the, these people who are walking on Manhattan Beach and just one beach house out there and other. And uh, Brittany and Mike, will, they, every now and again, they will call one of their numbers to see how much it costs. They said, look at this place right here. On the beach, you know, two-story, outside, I mean, unbelievable. And he said, we've been here many, many times. There's never anybody here. That's like one of their four houses. Like, they made a call, $19 million, you know. But the Bible says the wealth of the wicked 
is stored up for the just. Righteous. So I'm actually claiming to be the beach house. You know, <laughs> Amen. Pick the beach. Huh? Abraham's blessing. Bro. Abraham's blessing. <laughs> we we uh, going to hear it. Amen. Abraham's blessing is mine. One more scripture. Go to 61. Chapter 61. This is the this is where Jesus, the day Jesus started his ministry, we spoke about this. He walked into the temple, and it was his turn. They gave him the book, and he opened up right here. And this is what he said: The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, to heal. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberties to the captives. The opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Comma, but he closed the book. He closed the book on the comma because he wasn't ready to, to read the last part and the day of vengeance of our God. He's like, I'm not here for that day. It's coming the time when that's going to happen. But right now, I'm here because I'm anointed by God to preach good tidings to the poor to heal the broken heart, to set them that are captive free, and to open up the prison of the Bible. And I want to tell you something right now. Because now we are the body of Christ. That is our scripture. You need to say that. The, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. How many have the Holy Spirit? Since, since they believe. Okay, well the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. And He has called you to heal the broken heart. Our with the word of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. Not us. We don't boast on ourselves. Paul said, I don't boast on myself. I boast in the Lord. It ain't me. If you knew me back in the day, you knew I was a, a lost cause. Okay? But we're not the old man we used to be, right? That old man is all dead God. But we have been called by the Lord, anointed by the Lord, to preach good tidings to the poor. We've been sent to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim the, 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 claim the liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. You know when Jesus told his disciples, who sin you or re you release, they are released. I think we talked about that. Have you said that? He says, who sins you release, they are released. And who sins you hold bound, they are held bound. Now, some religions have taken that to mean there are special men who can do that. Now, this is what it simply means. If someone comes to me and I preach the gospel to them, the good news, and I say, if you repent of your sins and turn to the Lord, you will be redeemed, you will be saved, you will be set free. And they say, I want to do that. I want to, I want to, I want to repent of my sin, turn from my wicked way, and I want to trust in the Lord. You know what I can say? Your sins are forgiven. You are set free. Can I not? Yes. Is that not the truth? And if they tell me, I don't believe that. I can tell them the sins ain't forgiven. Yes, sir. We can say that we are made in His image. So yes. We have that today. Amen. That's right. We're made, Amen. We're made in the image of God. Amen. Amen. And you're not the one doing it. Correct. God has done it. All Him. Like the people on the cross, Jesus is doing it. That's what I tell. We have an old saying that's really good. It says, I'm just a nobody. I'm telling everybody. About somebody who can save anybody. Amen. That's who we are.